Let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahaba Kakwadash in Hebrew. That will be giving praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone, and the other elders who I learned from. Honors to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who are the true Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So this lesson here, I want to give a shout out to one of my listeners and subscribers, uh, the brother Robert W. I think Robert would be his first name and W would be his last initial. And brother, I want to let you know that I've been getting all your comments. I appreciate you tuning in with me, learn, listening and learning with me, supporting me, um, giving me good comments for positivity. I see you, brother. I hear you. Um, I want to let you know I've been getting your comments, I think, a little over, if not around, probably around a year now. I receive all your comments across my various channels, probably over a year. Brother, every time I try to respond to you, YouTube hides the comment. Like, your comment would be public, be visible, but... Anytime I respond, my response is not visible. Or if I do respond, they just hide your comment altogether. I'm getting your comments. So keep tuning in with me. Keep reaching out to me. It's a blessing every time that I hear from you and see you left me a comment. You know, I see you a sincere brother, a faithful servant of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that's seeking his salvation. So I'm about to show you a few examples of what happens when I go to your comments. So I got this comment from you yesterday. You see, comment is highlighted. I'm going to click it. Then you see it automatically takes me to another comment. You know, my video about the true size of Africa. So I'm going to just click that video to show you that your comment is hidden. You see, it's only showing one comment. It let me reply to everybody else, but it don't let me reply to you. Now I'm gonna show you another example. Cause I got another comment from you just the other day, right here. See, the, your name is highlighted and I'm gonna click that. And it automatically takes me to another comment. Now I'm gonna actually go to that video that you left this comment on. Most people were created to be destroyed. And we're gonna uh, take a look at this. See, it doesn't even show your comment. I actually responded to you in this comment that you left. I left like four responses. I was just trying to leave as many as possible, hoping that some of them would stick. I'm going to read some of it. Shalawan Barakatha, Yahweh, Barakatha, Yahweh Shai, Thou art thy teacher, for your end of blessings, although dishearten me. I do not dare to question Yahweh or his will. I remember the things you was asking me in this comment. Like, would the two thirds be destroyed forever, gone and forgotten forever? I had sort of begin to answer your question that the two thirds will be reborn in the kingdom, but the other nations of people that's destroyed, they're going to be reborn as servants in our kingdom. Now, I'm going to do a more in depth lesson on that real soon. I just want to let you know I'm getting your comments. And I'm going to come down quite a bit. For some reason, brother, you saw the white man don't want us to link up. Even like here, you see a name is highlighted. I'm going to click that. Your comment is just not visible. Uh, but Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 will tell you that there's nothing new under the sun. Because what's actually going on 
they're trying to stop the building of the house of David. As a matter of fact, the scriptures I want to get real quick is Amos 9 and 11. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it back as in the days of old. <clears throat> so the sealing of the elect, the gathering of the true man of the Lord. That's the Lord raising up the house of David. And again, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, and there's nothing new under the sun because we know the story of the book of Nehemiah. Pretty much Nehemiah, you know, um, went to the king, Artaxerxes, I believe is his name, and sought his permission to have Jerusalem and the temple rebuilt. Because remember, Babylon destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. And so did the white man Esau. So Nehemiah was sorrowful. He sought permission from the king that he could go back to his city and rebuild it up with the elders, the priests, and the scribes, and pretty much the men of Jerusalem. And while they was building up the city, you had a whole bunch of haters, a whole bunch of scoffers, you know, people of these other nations trying to stop that building process of Jerusalem. They were trying to stop Jerusalem from trying to be rebuilt. And I'm going to get some of that in chapter 4, but that's what's going on right now. The so-called white man, these other nations, artificial intelligence, these robots, they hide in your comments. They don't want us linking up, exchanging info, having a conversation, trying to support one another. But we're going to get some of this. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth. And what does that wall represent? Because what was the wall built with? It was built with, you know, brick, with stones, and we are those lively stones. We the Lord's precious stones. Because again, let's go back to Amos 9 and 11. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Well, the tabernacle of David is falling once again. After it was rebuilt, the Romans, the so-called white man, came and destroyed it in 70 AD. So the tabernacle is falling again. But when we read Amos 9 and 11, that's not talking about the physical tabernacle of David. It's talking about the spiritual tabernacle. Because what's the temple What's the tabernacle without the man of the Lord? So the Lord not going to rebuild the physical tabernacle, then rebuild the nation of Israel, the people. The Lord is going to raise up the nation of Israel first, the people. Then the tabernacle will be built. So this tabernacle that the Lord will raise up is actually concerning the men of the Lord. So in that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. You know, that would be the man of the Lord, you know, that fell from that wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we once had and closed up the breaches thereof. And that's what we see as the elect is being sealed. The Lord is closing up the breaches of the tabernacle. You know, that's the wall being built. We that wall. But it came to pass when Sam Ballet heard that we built the wall, he was rough and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. That's why you got people like pretty much all these people that's coming up against this truth. That's pretty much the existence of them being here right now. Like Vocab Malone and all these other haters that hate the truth. Their existence depend on us. They was put here to try to stop the truth. And anytime they see us, new prophets on the scene, the scriptures being broke down correctly, us gathering in the comment section, what they doing? They taking away subscribers, hiding the videos, taking the videos down, hiding the comments, deleting the channels. Then we possibly losing connections and contacts and people that we were in contact with. And not only that, they sitting behind the screen mocking us. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews 
Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? Will they receive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burnt? And that's how these other nations feel. They like these Negroes. What, think they, what they think they're going to do? They think they're going to come back together? They think they're going to reestablish the nation of Israel? They think they're going to really gather the Lord's elect? You know, they're trying to guess our next move and pretty much figure out what the Lord is going to do. But this, this is all the working of the Lord. You can't figure this out. Verse 3, Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. So they said that even a fox can break down the wall that was being built. And that's how the so-called white men feel. They feel like they can throw a monkey wrench in this truth and break up the ceiling of the Lord's elect. That they can throw a monkey wrench in what the Lord is doing and stop the house of David from being erected. But whatever they do, they can't stop us from coming together in the spirit. So to the brother Robert W., I definitely appreciate you and uh, much love to you. Um, and we may have to exchange emails or something, possibly phone numbers. I got phone numbers of a few brothers I'd be in contact with. So we're going to have to exchange some kind of email or some kind of contact info so we can uh, check on each other. You know, if you got a question or something, instead of leaving in the YouTube comment, you can just hit me directly. Here, O oh our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head. If give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So build we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. So yeah, this building of the wall is the house of David being built and closing up the breaches thereof. So the, the Lord is raising up our ruins. And what's the ruins? That's the dead state we was in. We being raised out of the congregation of the dead, being quickened, being made alive in the spirit. But it came to pass that when Sambada and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped. See that? The breaches was closed up. Let's go back. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. All these different nations, they heard that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wroth. And what's that? That's them seeing these believers wake up to the truth. And what? This truth spreading like a wildfire across the earth and conspire all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. So that's the time of Jacob's trouble we're going into when the enemy shall come in like a flood. And how are they fighting against us right now? You know, hiding our YouTube comments, taking down our YouTube channels. Well, the enemy going to come in with, with the sword with his military, his technology, his robotics, his artificial intelligence, and to physically fight against us to try to stop this building process. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them, and cause the work to cease. So this work that we're doing now, they're trying to stop that. Like we don't see them. We see the evidence of them. We see the YouTube comments being hidden. We see the channels being taken down. So we see you trying to stop, trying to cause the work to cease Esau. Therefore, I sat in the lower place behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with swords and spears and bows. So during the building process, Nehemiah was arming the people with physical weapons to hold it down while they was building. That's us being set up now. While we building, 
what's that weapon we got? It's not a sword in the spirit, but it's a spiritual sword. And I looked up and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be ye not afraid of them. Remember the Lord Yahweh, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass where our enemies heard it, that it was known to us that Yahweh had brought their counsel to naught. So yeah, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is bringing the counsel of the so-called white man to naught. You know, trying to stop the house of David from being built. Trying to stop the sealing of the elect. They can, they can take down all the channels they want. They can hide all the YouTube comments they want. That ain't gonna that ain't gonna say that ain't gonna change nothing. And we return all of us to the wall. So no matter what was going on, these brothers was always building. That's the man of the Lord. No matter what channels get took down, no matter what we lose, we always build it. And one time Esau sent the virus or something to my external hard drive where I keep my lessons. Messed up the hard drive. I almost lost all my lessons you know, about a year ago. But I bought two more since then, and I know what to do pretty much now. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them both held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the harbingers, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. So yeah, while they was building, half the people was building, and Nehemiah set the other half of the people to be armed with the sword. They which built it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that lad it. Every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. Let's read that again. They which built it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that lad it. Every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. That's the man of the Lord. In one hand we doing the work, in one hand we holding the weapon. And what's that weapon? It's the spiritual sword of the Bible. This is a dangerous work we part of. We're going to see how dangerous it is when the enemy come in like a flood. But I just wanted to get a few scriptures that illustrates and narrates what's going on today with how they be playing us on YouTube. But rock and bye. bless you to the brother Robert W. Keep pushing, stay in the truth, and endure to the end. Till next time, shalom.